And how you doing? How you doing there? You're in Valencia or Dumaguete right now? Uh, I'm in Valencia, which which is my home now. Thanks to you. The truth of the matter is I saw your video uh, about four, three or four years ago, and mm -hmm. I came here with my wife and kids, and the next thing I know, I'm now I'm building a house here. So Wow. That's thanks awesome. Thanks to you. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we began, I think, uh, communicating here a little over a year ago. Um, right. and, uh, and, and for those who don't know, uh, again, uh, Chris has had a, a pretty interesting background in life that led to him finally uh, choosing the Philippines to live as an expat. And uh, so I guess one of the first things we can jump into is you're, you're building a house from the ground up uh, there in the Philippines, which, you know, is kind of a challenge. But uh, can you tell us what, what has helped you to accomplish this task and, you know, kind of some of the background on, on the expenses? I may put some pictures up here uh, here while you're doing that. But you want to just kind of give us a background? On, on why you chose to build from ground up as opposed to uh, buy something that was like, you know, turnkey, ready to go? Well, um, I have, I've been in real estate since I was 18 and I've lost money and made money, you know, but mm -hmm. uh, one of the, one of the things that I, I think is a pretty steadfast principle is that it's more expensive to renovate than to do new construction. Renovation always has a lot of unknowns in it. I have a background after I left my government job. I had, went to the private sector and I did a lot of investing and that sort of thing. What I learned was that you want to be buying when they're crying and selling when they're yelling. When there's blood in the streets, when there's panic, that's probably a good time to buy. And that's pretty much what happened to me. Uh, I wasn't really ready to buy. The Chinese virus came along, boom, everything was locked down. Uh, the economy started to teeter pretty bad. A German couple, or rather a Filipino German couple, uh, owned a really nice piece of property and they were in total panic mode and they wanted to just dump it. And I was able to scoop it up at a pretty decent price, uh, I think. And, uh, you know, that's the that, that's the genesis of how it all started. Now, um, I've got a couple of pictures that uh, you sent. Maybe you could give some, uh, you know, give some narration. Uh, I'll go ahead and put it up there. Uh, what are we what are we looking at? here this is the back of the home and if you look uh there's an elevation issue on this lot the front of the lot is of a higher elevation than the lower so to make the home even i ha i built sort of um cathedral or greek style steps all along the back and and i made a huge i think it's almost five meter porch off of the back of the house and the, the green thing you see is my chicken coop because i'm a, hmm. i love to raise chickens and then uh we got it now is this the front of the house that's the front of the house to the right is the a two-car garage yeah. <clears throat> uh, the, you see the front door and you see um uh the two windows for the the first two bedrooms the gray area there will be covered with a decorative brick uh which will accent hopefully accent the exterior and let me see over here that's my driveway it, I built that road. Uh, that's probably 25 loads of, of dirt. Um, I built that road going to go down onto the property. Uh, it's mm -hmm. 2,000 square meters, which is basically a half a square, a half an acre. And let's see. Now, if you don't mind my asking, uh, how much how much were you able to, given the, like you said, it was a stress sale for the sellers, uh, how much were you able to, to get the land for this roughly uh, half acre? Roughly about 55,000 US. Cool. And let's see, we got another picture here on the interior now i guess this is going to be the cr this is the master bath i've got a, a a divider there in glass block and then there'll be a a glass uh, you know a really cl a nice glass panel that'll go up to the ceiling uh it's a walk-in walk-out shower mm -hmm. um and it's it's a it's a big bath it has a a jacuzzi tub and a, a it has a toilet and a urinal for me and what are we looking at here that's the jacuzzi tub all right that looks cool yeah for two now how, how difficult was it to find this item did you have to ship it in from like somewhere or did they have it there in duma no i was able to buy it right here um at one of the local hardware stores we don't we're not having any real supply issues some but because of the economic crisis that's happened um there's still a lot Lot of stock of high-end items out there and now uh where where's this angle from this is the great room all there's it's a four bedroom three bath all of the 
rooms open up into this great room and then to the right of the picture will be the kitchen and then to the left of the picture will be the entertainment side with a tv and then we'll do a dining room table over towards the front window now i guess uh, one question uh, a lot of guys might have is did you have a contractor draw it out for you or did you like do it on a piece of paper and then someone else figured out the dimensions how does that work for the layout? Well, I, I i actually hired a, an architect um was pretty inexpensive it cost me about 350 dollars oh. and the guy was really good mm -hmm. uh but here's here's the thing once you get a once you, you get your plans and you get the approval and all of that the permits to build they give you a, a piece of paper and you have to put up a basically a permit board there is no inspection there's no electrical inspection no plumbing inspection you're on your own you, so it's got to work it, when it's all done <laughs> well, yeah it's a i really like it and i uh -huh. built i built uh, all over florida and i really like it because i don't have i don't have to wait on an inspector I don't have to do anything. They they just show up at the end and give you your your CO, your certificate of occupancy, and mm -hmm. you screw this up. It's your problem. I, I would guess that that's a sigh of relief. I'm I'm very unfamiliar with the whole building process because I've never done it there before, and I would imagine it's a sigh of relief to a lot of guys to know that there's not these stage by stage inspections because you never know. You know, you're outside the U.S. That could turn into a whole money under the table to get get the the, the exactly approvals things so that that's exactly. a sigh of relief to know that you don't have to deal with all that but like you said the impetus is now on you to make sure that this wiring at least looks like it's up to code and you're not going to have right. a fire hazard and they're not right. building onto the cement when it's not fully set the slope of the land i mean all that's pretty much on you to, to keep a track of right well <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you i would i don't know if i would have attempted this if i did didn't have a friend uh, of mine who is my actually my contractor uh, and I'll let me put in a plug plug for him yeah um, his, his name is Tommy and he's the owner of Paco's tacos right there in Valencia yeah and I know also, Tommy uh, met with him yeah, many you know times Tommy. there yeah a great guy he owns um, uh, another restaurant called Hillside which has got excellent um, American European type food and uh, mm -hmm. but mainly his his main bag is uh, contracting he's built numerous apartments condominiums homes he's been here for 17 years he's a former building inspector in california mm -hmm. and is he has a degree and uh, i think he had a contractor's license when he was in california so oh, okay now uh, a big question i know i've had and i've gotten different again feedback stories from guys who have built homes uh in fact one buddy of mine brian brian smith up in northern uh behold he largely did a lot of it himself you know yeah. he was very hands-on mm -hmm. and and he had like two filipino guys that that you know helped with a lot of the heavy lifting but now one of the big questions you know or concerns that comes up is you know like i said tommy was essentially the contractor but the concern comes up with finding reliable help locally to do a lot of the grunt work that is not only capable of doing the work and following instruction but is going to actually do a decent day's work you know you get right. all these stories about you, they, right. you know you come back and the guys are all just hanging around john because you know whatever excuse they came up with what how has that been worked out what part has tommy played in that and have you had any issues as far as getting a decent day's work out of these guys how's that all panned out well the advantage of having him as my contractor that's on him he's he's running the, the whole show he's been running these same crews same guys for five six years some of them i think some of them even longer mm -hmm. so he he keeps him game, gainfully employed continuously he's weeded out all the all the riffraff and whatnot yeah we have a few things now and then you know that we have to police up but in reality uh, that's why i'm paying him and right. and uh he's just got it down to a fine science you know that's that's why i say i don't know if i would have done this if i didn't have confidence in him and and him to help him basically to do it because uh, it's death of a thousand cuts is what it mm -hmm. is and 
I have experience. I've built and remodeled homes in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And I, as you know, I speak Spanish and I work primarily with Guatemalan or Mexican crews. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, that they some of that stuff happens there too, you know. Yeah. So yeah. people will take advantage of you if you let them. I'm the kind of person that I really hate to deal with like the nonsense. What I know is just BS nonsense from like a car right. salesman right. or a group of guys that you know. It's like we were very clear. You know, you had to get this many feet of wall built by the end of the day. I hate mm -hmm. the excuses, and I you know I want to be productive and. Right. So, but I hate having to have those conversations. So it sounds like having a good contractor who is accustomed, that's his personality. He's good at it. Having a good contractor is the key. So like you mentioned, Tommy, Tommy's a good guy to, to consult with there in Dumaguete area. I would say that for guys, again, that are going to build a house, who knows, maybe in Luzon, late there, whatever, probably the avenue is to go to the Facebook expat page for that city say you know right. groups were just behold whatever and then probably get a personal reference from guys that are living in that and say yeah this contractor's good that one's bad whatever probably getting a good personal reference would would be the way to go we have a we have a an expat community of maybe a hundred people that regularly get together on different occasions and um word travels very fast here who you are and if you're full of shit or not and your reputation is everything here so i believe that that's the most important asset that you have when you're going to build a home is to know your community spend some time there and get to know the people before you hire anyone get to know who they are v and i we plan on living at every prospective place we might eventually buy a property and settle down we plan on living there anywhere from three to six months each location to get a good feel for it is this really what we want kind of a thing i honestly believe that you are you're going to come out cheaper faster and get exactly what you're like what you like doing it brand new mm -hmm. i really do now mm -hmm. your mileage may vary you know everybody has yeah. their own way, way to think but that's my opinion now it's good to know that i mean because this is educational for me like you mentioned having a contractor deal with all this nonsense that takes a lot of headache out of my hair uh, okay so you go ahead you buy this this piece of land this you know chunk of property out in the province what was your experience uh, as far as getting the utilities in for electric, uh, sewer, or did you go with a septic tank, potable water? I mean, did you go with a well? What what route did you take to get the, the utilities in and what did that roughly cost? For the benefit of anybody who's been to Valencia and knows the town, I'm the home is located uh, 0.4 kilometers away from the uh, San Pedro, the church, the Catholic church there. And uh, it, it's just before the, the graveyard. So it's really close. It's within walking distance to the center of town and the park and, and whatnot. I'm on city. I'm, I'm on what is, I guess, city water. It, I think it might be a private corporation, but it, it's the local water system. If you've been here and lived here, you know that you know that the the electric uh, deal here is pretty pretty sketchy. Yeah. Now, uh, for for sewer, did you go with a septic tank or, or what? Yeah, you're going to go. You're there is no central uh, sewage here. You're everybody has septic, which is what you really want anyway. Now, for water, did you get? Because I've seen these all over places I've rented along the Philippines. Did you build a tower or did you put a tank on the roof? What what did you do there for for like a We're, water reservoir? We have we haven't started the tower yet, but well, we have started. I'm sorry, we've we've got the steel welded, um, but we haven't started the concrete on it. We're going to mm -hmm. build a tower, about a 30 foot tower. I have a 2,000 liter plastic, you know, the that are it's made for potable water. 2,000 liter tank that's going to go on top of that, and then coming off of that, the water system, no matter whether it's the local system or not, the water here has a lot of iron, a lot of carbon, and a lot of sediment, and. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have a I have a water filtration system and a couple of spin filters which are to remove the hundred micron uh, and above particles out of the water. Oh, Long okay. story short, you can get good potable water, but you'll, you you're probably going to want to filter it. Now another question or concern you know that I know I have, and I'm sure many expats have, is so you go ahead and you build this house. 
how far do you think you're going to go as far as securing the perimeter, you know, from burglars and whatnot? Uh, what are your plans there as far as, you know, securing the perimeter with a fence or anything like that? I've lived in uh, and stayed in um, U.S. State Department certified secure residences for, residencies for uh, um, staff in different places when I worked for the government. And so I I actually have a small background in that sort of thing. I like a, a lot of people are their first inclination is to build a wall. I'm not so I'm not against the a wall, but I like a wall that I can see through. I mm -hmm. want to be able to see what's on the other side. Um, any the bottom line is if anybody wants to come in your house, they're going to come in. Right. I mean, if they have enough, if they have enough firepower and determination to overcome whatever you've put up, they'll come in. Right. But yeah, it's mostly the, a deterrent for the the right, amateurs and right. the lazy. <laughs> well, you know, we don't have. I, I, we I don't lock my doors half the time around here. Um, we don't we don't have any crime in Valencia. There's zero crime that mm -hmm. I can see. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know some of the cops here, and they they tell me no, there's no problem. However, I am going to put in. I have solar. Uh, street lamps that i've installed all over the property so even during a brownout at night we'll have uh, yeah, light yeah. the house will be lit up but i'm going to have motion detectors uh, i've got a i'm going to put up a some sort of barrier fence with wop with maybe some barbed wire on the top and i have a couple of yap yap dogs that act as you know early warning my wife has a a, a permit for a weapon okay. and um so I mean, you know, yeah. you know I don't, I don't, I don't want to use that, but if I have right. to, I will. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and what I've seen, um, with one exception in the past, is that uh, most burglars, you know, in the Philippines are pretty much amateurs, you know, who right. go for the easy target, you know, right. uh, like the vanity blinds that you, you're, they have like aluminum. You can literally just undo it with your hand and go right in the house. Those right. are the why they keep using those. They're pointless. Um, unless you put wrought iron bars over it. And, and, and usually they, they tend to, like I said, you're talking about anything from like high school kids to uh, 30 year old guys who never really got it together. And they're just looking for the easy mark you know right but when you're right. when they see a house that has dogs l the place lights up in the middle of the night when there's motion there's bars on the windows mahogany doors like real doors which you can still get there in the philippines I right mean, right they're almost right. bulletproof <laughs> And, they are, uh, they are. You know, when they see a house with all these deterrents, they'd rather just go down the road and, you know, rob somebody else's house. The only exception was a place over in Bakong, which had a fully perimeter, you know, wall, a dog, but the dog was too friendly of a dog. And they ended up uh, robbing the, the cottage that was next door to mine. And But there was a confrontation because they didn't know that the expat and his wife was actually home. So then they ran off. But they still, you know, again, we had a gate at the front and all these things. But aside from that one exception, uh, usually they're looking for the easy, you know, mark. Now, I've talked to different Philippine families over the years who they never leave the house unoccupied. Right, there's always right. one family member that stays right. behind. You know, so if if there's a birthday party over at Jolly Bee or Pizza Place, they they just bring something back for the one person right. <laughs> who's going to stay home. If I have four children and and my brother-in-law lives with us, uh, and and he's a blessing. He really is. Somebody's always home at my. I guess if there's any other questions that uh, anybody has about building the home. I mean, we kind of covered uh, the, the major issues, but if anybody has questions, uh, you can come back and, and answer their comments. You know, I'm sure there'll be other questions uh, as far as, uh, you know, maybe cost or, or just whatever. 